horror author William Patterson, a.k.a. Eric Morris. And welcome to my world. So sit back and experience a new dimension in talk. And make sure to have your lucky cup of coffee here because this is the coffee vlog. Yes, it does. First thing in the morning, I pour myself a cup. It, it helps me get myself going. It helps to wake me up. Garden Scares, everybody. It's me, Mr. Happy Person, uh, William Patterson, King of Splatterpunk, and author of the Camp Crystal Lake novel, welcoming you to this edition of the Coffee Vlog. Sippy Sippy. Alrighty. Well, uh, reason why I'm doing another coffee vlog so soon, you know, I mean, it's only been a few days since my last, uh, coffee vlog. You know, mind, mind the sound of the irritating children next door because, you know, I have to deal with this on a regular basis. <laughs> Anyways, I thought I'd actually talk about something very interesting with writers. You know, something that keeps coming up with uh, writers, and fellow writers, and, um, you know, editors and stuff that I, that I work with. And this is actually is about swearing about swearing in books now a lot of these people honestly think that swearing has no place in books that's right oh no no you know you can't you can't say fuck in a book you can't say kiss my ass. You can't say uh, the word cunt or anything else that's, that's uh, you know, a swear. No, you know, when you're writing a book, you have to keep your, your, uh, your language clean. Because people get so offended by it and it makes you, you know, look, uh, less respectable. Ugh. That thing always clicks. Does that. Anyways, um, well, I take issue with this. As writers, we put a mirror up to the society that we are showing. And we are not pilgrims. We are not in the 17th century anymore. We are in 2018. And honestly, when I'm out in the wild of the world, there are people who talk like truck drivers. They say fuck. They say bitch. They say all kinds of lovely little swears. Shoot, at my uh, regular job, which is at a restaurant, I've heard kids say fucking damn. Seriously. Little kids saying that because they learned it from their parents who say fucking damn. You know, uh, amusingly enough, uh, one of my biggest haters, and I won't mention her name because I don't want to give her um, 
any uh, publicity. Uh, this this woman claims to be a uh, feminist, but I'll tell you something. You know, my idea of a feminist is a woman who is fighting for women's rights so that they can be equal to men. You know, not playing a victim, not sitting there talking about the penis conspiracy and all that. But anyways, this so-called tough feminist gets unraveled when you say the word bitch. Seriously. You know, you would think that you're saying the word cunt. You know, and the thing is that, you know, if you say cunt around my sister, she will rip your jaw. So I'm actually risking myself by saying that word in this house. Anyways, um, yeah, she's like, how can you say God, you little bitch? You know, the thing is, I'm from California. We have guys calling their girlfriend their bitch. You know, I hear bitch a half dozen times a day. I hear guys calling other guys, you know, hey, bitch, when they're pissed off at them and stuff. You know, <sighs> bitch has, has little connotations <laughs> anymore. You know, in modern society, calling a woman a bitch or calling a, even a guy a bitch. You know, it's like, ooh, you called me a bitch, whatever, fuck you. Um, but yeah, this, this uh, so-called feminist comes all unwound. Over it, it's like oh, you call me a bitch. <laughs> yeah, tough feminist. You want you want to you want to talk about a feminist, a real feminist. You talk about my dear old friend, Dero Debbie Roshan. Now that is a feminist. She is for equal rights. She wants women to be paid equal to men. She wants the casting couch to be uh, burned. And, you know, she doesn't sit there and say, oh, all men are evil and, you know, oh, you know, join our, jo join our uh, ranks with the unshaven legs. You know, just like that one comedian going, hashtag feminist. <laughs> Yeah, um, no. Anyways, so anyways, uh, the thing is that, um, you know, when I was working on my book, Symphony of Death, one Robert Diablo, my uh, editor, Kathy, kept giving me crap about, uh, you know, can't you curb down the swearing and that? You know, oh, you know, can can I take out a few of these fucks and that? And I'm going, no. No. That's the way the character talks. You know. And, you know, my main character in the wraparound stories, uh, Danny Dark, is a... Um, British uh, horror rock singer. And the thing is that uh, he, swear, he swears like a truck driver. And it's part of his character. It's part of who he is. It's those little defects and it's those little things that you come up with that make these characters more real. You know, one, one of the weaknesses that the great science fiction writer Isaac Asimov had 
was that his characterization was weak because all of his characters were boring. They, had, you know, he didn't write characters very well. They had to be perfect. They had to be, uh, you know, moralistic in all this, and it uh, made him boring. You know, his ide his ideas for his films and stuff were different. You know, he was a he was a genius in regard to that, but. When it came to um, characters, he was very weak on his characters. And that's one of the things that I'm not. When I write a character, I write a character the way that they should be written. And if that character swears, that character swears. And, you know, and, you know, my editors uh, beware. <laughs> If they try to sit there and try to homogenize my damn characters, because I will go Harlan Ellison on them. But anyways, uh, in regard to Symphony of Death Part One, you know, uh, during the editing, uh, at one point Kathy uh, went after me about the afterword in there, where I was talking about. Uh, you know, how I uh, recycled Robert Diablo and talked about uh, me and the Soskas and uh, their script idea, Bob. And the thing is, in one part, I went and quoted Jen Soska. In in this, in this, you know, it's it's, and I wanted it to be clear that it was a you know it was Jen Selska that I was about. So I did it uh, unedited. So, anyways, here I'll read this to you. When I told the Soskas that I loved Harvey and felt I could be of assistance to them with Bob, I got the following answers from the girls. Oh, Bill, that would be fucking fabulous. You know we love you and think you are a fucking fantastic writer. Once we get done with American Mary and start work on Bob, you'll be the first person we'll get in touch with to help us. You fucking rock. Well, anyways, uh, Kathy wanted to take out all the fucks in that quote. She insisted quite virulently. I mean, seriously, the woman... Uh, uh, practically channels Dr. McCoy. God damn it, Bill! You know, there's too many fucks in this, it, you know, just in this one section. And I, and I told her, I said, the thing is, Kathy, that's the way the Soskas talk. They say fuck every, you know, constantly. You know, I even did an interview on my radio show, and all through the interview was fuck, 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 fuck. Anyways, so in the end, she had to cave, and it stayed in the book. So, you know, here's a little suggestion to you uh, writers out there. You know... It's not going to ruin you as a writer. You know, I, I get sick of hearing these people saying, oh, well, you know, you, you, you don't sound like a credible writer if you swear in your, uh, in your books. Bullshit! If you're dealing with characters that are from the streets... 
and that. You're, you're ridiculous if you don't include the dialogue, the way that straight people talk. I mean, right in the, in the book here. Uh, Danny Dark's uh, uh, ex-wife, Noosh. She's uh, German and that, and she speaks a clipped English. I put that in there. I made it where she mispronounces words in there. I put in an accent into, you know, her dialogue to make her sound more authentic, to make her sound more the way the character should sound. That is what a writer is supposed to do. When they do their characters, they do their characters honestly. And to sit there and restrict and say, oh, no, no, you can't. Uh, say fuck or damn or any, you know, any of this other stuff. You can't swear in your book or, you know, you're going to look like an inferior writer. No. You know, I'm not going to be a pompous writer who sits there and says, oh, no, I'm writing a perfect reality that... You know, everyone does things right and moral and all that bullshit. You know, then, then your book's going to suck. You know, unless, of course, you're in a science fiction uh, situation. And the thing is, in Battlestar Galactica, they, they swore. But the thing is that the writer was cute with it. Instead, instead of saying fuck, they said frack. But I'm not going to go around having my street people say frack and darn and all this. No, that's stupid. You know, the thing is, authors, what I am saying is be true to your uh, material. If you need to swear in your... Uh, books swear. Swear like a truck driver. Because, you know, like every author is from the past on, you are putting a mirror up to our society and our society swears. We have an imperfect society. You know, our people are not morally, uh, uh, perfect uh, beings. You know, as much as we'd like them to be, we are not. We are broken, you know, imperfect creatures. So, be honest to yourself. Be honest to your readers. And be honest in your work. That's all I'm saying. So... As always, keep America strong, watch horror films, and drink your coffee. This is the uh, coffee vlog. Enjoy.